Choosing the best professional camera for you will depend on the type of photo you take. If you are a sports or news photographer, you will need a clear autofocus camera and a fast continuous burst mode so that you can capture all the action. Fashion and commercial photographers want to focus more on multiple megapixel cameras for image cropping and large-scale printing. This means that finding a camera that suits you will depend on what you need from your kit. Hi everybody, today we will show you 10 professional cameras of the year 2022. Canon EOS R3. Released in September 2021, the highly anticipated Canon EOS R3 is somewhat a beast of a camera. Whether you shoot weddings, sports, portraits or pets, be sure to never miss a moment with blackout-free 30 frames per second stills and impressive 6K RAW video. Despite not being released as a mirrorless alternative to the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III, it is such up-to-date technology it outshines the 1DX 3 in more ways than one. It has a peerless AF system that enables you to select focus points moving your eyeball which means you never have to look away from the action. Combined with Canon's new it's able to detect not just human and animal IAF, it can track vehicles too. It features powerful in-body stabilization, it's lightning fast, so much, so you can actually slow down the shutter mechanism, and it's completely weather sealed. It's switched on in just 0.4 seconds which makes it ideal for catching a moment on the fly. Canon really did outdo themselves with the EOS R3 which has got us excited about the future of Canon cameras. Fujifilm X-T4 Some might argue the Fujifilm X-T4 isn't a pro camera, but in our eyes, it certainly is. It combines fast autofocus, impressive video capabilities, and a high-quality electronic viewfinder plus it's super user-friendly with all of its external dials. When the X-T3 was launched in 2018, it was incredibly well-received but lacked certain features such as in-body stabilization and a fully articulated screen. The X-T4 includes these features making it one of the best APS-C mirrorless cameras around. It still has the same sophisticated 26.1 MPX trans sensor and the ability to shoot 4K, but with an improved shutter and a new battery that lasts longer, Fujifilm has truly refined an already excellent product. Nikon D850 Where the Nikon D6 is built for sheer speed, durability and responsiveness, the D850 is built for resolution though it can still capture images at 7 frames per second or 9 frames per second with the optional battery grip. Some may say the D850 is the high point of DSLR resolution and perhaps that last great DSLR release, but it does not feel like a dinosaur. Its big, chunky body feels good in the hand and great with bigger lenses, and while its live view AF may be sluggish, it's a very powerful, modern-feeling camera, a superb all-rounder that actually feels as tough, rugged, fresh and exciting now as when it was launched back in 2017. Whenever I was shooting fashion or editorial, the Nikon D850 was my go-to camera due to how easy it was to navigate and change settings, and how beautiful the images came out. Nikon Z7 II The Z7 II is Nikon's flagship full-frame mirrorless camera, and an updated version of the original Z7. All the changes that we've seen on the Z7 II compared to the original Z7 are certainly welcome, especially the additional card slot and dual processors. That being said, we can't help feeling Nikon have played it a bit safe. It doesn't really rival the impressive Canon EOS R5 or the Sony A7 R4, it just builds on the original Z7. It's still a brilliant camera and although it doesn't have as many standout features, it is capable of shooting in 12-bit 4K Apple ProRes RAW when using an external monitor such as the Atmos Ninja V, although you do have to pay for the upgrade. Nikon Z9 Nikon might have been late to the game in launching its professional, top-spec mirrorless, but the Nikon Z9 was definitely worth the wait. It's an absolute beast of a camera when it comes to video, knocking the Canon EOS R3 out of the park. It's capable of 8K 60-pixel video recording or 8K 30-pixel with an enormous 2-hour record limit. Nikon decided to remove the mechanical shutter completely which means the Z9 is capable of 120 frames per second continuous shooting and has a max shutter speed of 132nd which makes it perfect for sport and bird photography. The Z9 is powered by deep learning AF which makes the camera capable of nine kinds of recognition, human eyes, faces, heads and upper body, animal eyes, heads and bodies, and cars, planes, trains and motorbike. It has the same 493 AF points as the Nikon Z7 II which seems impressive, until you find out that the Canon EOS R3 has a whopping 4779 AF points. The Z9 comes in quite a bit cheaper than both the Sony A1 and the Canon EOS R3, and it has a lot of advanced features. Olympus OMD EM1X Olympus raised a few eyebrows when it launched the OMD EM1X, 
a big new professional camera aimed squarely at the sports market, but with what looked like very similar specs to the existing EM1. But dig deeper and you find the EM1X is a very different beast, with an integrated grip for bigger battery capacity and duplicated horizontal vertical shooting controls and a dual processing system that dramatically ups the game for autofocus tracking, with a new AI system for recognizing and tracking subjects. What many won't realize, too, is that Olympus has an extremely compelling pro lens lineup, especially for telephoto lenses, and while the Olympus MFT sensor is smaller than the full-frame sensors used by Canon, Nikon and Sony Pro cameras, it will cost a lot less to build a full professional system, and it will be a lot lighter to carry around. If 20MP is enough, it is for EOS 1DX Mark III and Nikon D6 devotees, then the EM1X is a very powerful professional proposition indeed. It's undermined slightly by the EM1 Mark III, which borrows some of its tech, but the EMX's big, chunky body gives it a serious handling advantage, especially with bigger lenses. Panasonic Lumix S1R The new Lumix S range is a very interesting proposition for professional photographers, especially now that the range of L-mount lenses available is now quite good and growing fast. The Lumix S1R is the most enticing proposition for pros, combining 4K video capture with a high-speed 6K photo mode and huge 47.3 MP resolution. The 5.76 million dot electronic viewfinder is amazing, and the S1R handles very well too. The 24MP Lumix S1 is cheaper and a little better at video, but that's a cost decision if you're really serious about video, the pricier Lumix S1H is the one to go for. Sony A1. This could be the ultimate mirrorless camera, there is literally nothing it can't shoot. Sports? Check, thanks to its unreal 30 frames per second continuous shooting. Fine detail? Check, thanks to its 50.1 MP resolution. Video? Check, thanks to its 8K recording capability, even though it's hampered by not having a fully articulating screen. The Sony A1 is far and away the most advanced and most powerful camera on the market, yet this comes at a cost, literally. It's about twice the cost of the Sony A9 II, and it's even more expensive than the 100MP medium format Fujifilm GFX 100S. There are also caveats on the 30 frames per second burst, which isn't always achievable, sometimes topping out at 15 to 20 frames per second, which is still impressive, but less impressive than the spec sheet. Overall though, if you want a camera that can take on any possible assignment, this is it. Sony A7 or 4. The A7 or 4 is Sony's new highest resolution full-frame mirrorless camera, with a record-breaking 61 million pixels and yet still capable of shooting continuously at 10 frames per second. It also has Sony's usual very good 4K video capabilities, though still capped at 30p. The latest iteration of Sony's IAF. However, is stunningly effective at tracking portrait subjects, even in continuous AF. While the Sony A9 is designed for out-and-out -out speed and responsiveness, the A7 or Mark IV is much more suitable for all-round photography at the highest quality levels. It continues their line by offering the highest resolution of any full-frame camera, but while its 10 frames per second burst shooting looks good on paper for sports photography, it doesn't have the buffer capacity and responsiveness of the A9, so its high frame rate is useful to have but the A7 or Mark IV would not be your first choice for sports. However, for outright resolution, the A7 or Mark IV reigns supreme and not just in the Sony camp, but amongst full-frame cameras in general. You have to switch up to medium format to beat this, with all the costs and limitations that go with it. Not even the new Sony A1, at twice the price, can match this resolution. Sony A9 Mark II Until we got our hands on the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III, the Sony A9 II was by far the fastest full-frame sports camera we'd ever used. The fact it's still a lot smaller than the 1DX Mark III is a big selling point plus it has a lighting fast processor and its autofocus system is extremely impressive. It features a transfer and tagging system which enables you to capture up to 50 seconds of speech and convert it to an image caption plus the speed of image transfer has been massively improved which is great news for press or sports photographers who need to deliver images fast. It can shoot up to 20 frames per second using the electronic shutter and 3-inch, tilting, touchscreen LCD. It doesn't have the handy pro capture feature you would find on Olympus cameras, but considering what it does have going for it, we can forgive that.